Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. Today I am back with another one of your guys' favourite sort of videos it is an ED Q&A. I love doing these updated videos because I love helping you guys and it's literally the most rewarding feeling when you guys let me know how much these videos help you and although I'm not sort of documenting what I'm going through at the minute, I can still do these videos and answer the questions so hopefully you guys understand a bit. I can help you in some way. So um, I'm definitely going to be doing some what I in a day. I know, I know, I've said it so many times before, but genuinely I am going to pinky promise you that I am going to. I'm not going to do what I eat in a day, so I'm going to be doing what I eat in a few days because I never think that what I eat in one day is the best thing to do because every day is different and I never want someone to base it off one day. I just don't think that's right. I've written down some questions that I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me. How do you deal with tight clothing and like feeling like you're fat, etc? Honestly, I don't. I'm talking about me right now. I don't deal with that very well. I mean, that's probably something that is my main struggle now. It's the putting on clothes that I could fit in like a month ago or that fit slightly differently a month ago. You look in the mirror on the days I'm, you know, I'm having a good day, like nothing's really going wrong. My mentality isn't bad. It doesn't really affect me. I'm just like, okay, that's normal. Like you gain weight, like your body fluctuates. That's what happens. But on the days that isn't the best, it definitely doesn't help. To deal with that, you just have to sort of think, that you, you're expecting it, you know it's gonna happen, you know your body is gonna change its weight, you know it's gonna change its shape, you know it's gonna hold its fat in different places to other times. I think this is something that is really, really, really important. You should not fit your clothes, your clothes should fit you. So as soon as that pair of jeans, whatever it is, starts feeling a little bit tight, don't think, oh, I need to restrict to try and fit these again. Absolutely not. Bin them, give them to a charity shop, sell them, do whatever you wanna do with them, give them away, and get yourself a new pair, do it because else you're just going to be holding them in your wardrobe, in your drawer for the for however long, thinking in the back of your head, I'm going to lose weight in order to get these. Even if you're saying to everyone, oh yeah, I'm, I'm feeling way better. If you're keeping those bottoms that are too small for you, your mentality is definitely going to be in the hopes that you'll fit in them again one day. You shouldn't be like that. You, need, you can't do that. Your body is going to change. You can't live like that. You need to accept your body for what it is because it's amazing. How do you not relapse? Because they are always scared to start recovery because they feel like they're gonna like yo-yo and like relapse and stuff you need to go into recovery with such a positive mindset that you can do it if you go into recovery thinking i'm not gonna be able to do it i'm not gonna be able to do it obviously you're not gonna be able to do it your mind is already so powerful and has already made you get to the state that you're in to even consider start recovering if you're not being positive and not being strong-minded it will genuinely be so easy to fall into it you need to believe in yourself and you need to remember the reason you're doing it, how it's going to help you, how it's going to help the people around you, how it's going to help your physical health, your mental health, the physical and mental health of people around you, how it will let you have food freedom, how it will let you do things without having to think about food, how you can actually have energy, getting a book, getting a piece of paper or get multiple books, get multiple pieces of paper that you can write down why you're doing it, make sure them reasons you actually believe. If you don't believe them reasons, it's not going to help. For me, it was like I was so fed up of being so drained, exhausted, feeling depressed, low, genuinely having more energy makes you feel amazing. You want to get your period back. You want to like have normal bodily functions. Write down everything, even to the tiniest little thing, just as many things as possible of what you'll gain back. You'll gain back your life. You'll gain back yourself again. Honestly, you're two completely different people. Your ED person and you are, are not the same person. I've had people say on my, on my social media like, oh, you're different. You've changed. I don't like you anymore. And it's like, okay, Okay, this is the best version of me like that person that you liked was so ill mentally and physically like she was not okay she was sad and unhappy and unhealthy and I'm glowing like I'm like feel so much happier inside outside you need to think about the future the more you go back the longer it's going to take to get to the end point and the more you go back the more difficult it's going to be it's literally going to be so hard then to like go through it all again if you go back you're going to have to do this part that you've gone back by again and that's just oh, forget that has ben affected your recovery like explain so if you guys don't know ben ben is my boyfriend he's definitely helped me he's like my best friend before we were together he's someone that i've always been able to like 
talk to about stuff so before we got together I, I think we had like one really deep chat once I think it was while I was all in we had this chat and I told him like all the stuff like how bad it was when I was going through it all and how I struggled and stuff so you know he understood to an extent what I'd been through but never had he been so close to me that he'd know like ins and outs of it do you know what I mean so obviously now we're together he knows a lot more about it and like, understands me and I think what's so important is if you have someone new come into your life or like someone that's really close you doesn't understand it's so important to make sure they understand never would they be able to relate because I think it's something that it's so hard to relate to if you've never been through it I, I don't know if it's possible to relate to it if you've never been through it because it's just such a tricky one I try and make them understand as much as possible never get frustrated with them always 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 try and stay calm and like talk them through it they are obviously if they're the right person and they care for you and they want you to be okay they will genuinely only want to help and that's exactly what Ben's done so it's like you know sometimes people make like little slip ups and stuff and never is their attentions bad but with recovery you will find it so much easier to deal with when people make slight little like trigger like triggers for you if you hadn't been through what you'd been through it wouldn't be a mistake it's just that people are learning how to deal with your issues and how you deal with things so he helped me so much because when I feel like oh we're planning around what to eat he'll like help me with that if there's ever things I'm unsure about regarding food and stuff he'll just always like reassure it that like that is always the help that I need like the reassurance for it and he does a great job on it so thumbs up to Ben <laughs> this one sort of is the same sort of gist like how can you explain all in to family and friends this is something that is really 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 important again making sure they understand I had to go through this so during lockdown I had my best friend stay at mine with me I knew I was really going to struggle it was like the second lockdown and the first lockdown I was really struggling I just thought I really really need her and she stayed with me it was literally the best thing I ever did before she came I sent her over loads of YouTube videos loads of like Google searches that I had gone through and like thought oh yeah I relate to that oh yeah that's like me this explains it really well and I just asked her to like, sit and watch the videos and they were like what are you eating a days and like what people were going through their brains while they were eating it and like people's stories and I sent them over to her and I also did it to my dad because while my dad was at work my mom was the one mainly dealing with it so my mom had a better understanding of everything my dad as it was getting worse my dad didn't know how to deal with it when he was with me so I would send him over again like videos and things I'd highlight for him to read and although you know it's not the best you don't want to have to explain it all but you need to like the people around you want to help you need help but like, you can't have them around making it worse for you and if you send them over a few things and say hey I've been really struggling recently and it would really mean a lot if you just read through this or give this a quick watch you don't need to say anything to me about it I just want to feel at ease knowing that you have a bit more of an understanding about what I'm going through right now I hope that's okay you know and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to do that I think most people would someone said want me to talk about dealing with blow in recovery this is a really tricky one because when you start recovering you blow a lot more because you're having a lot more water intakes so obviously there's loads of water in like food and stuff and obviously you're eating a lot more food hopefully you are gonna have a lot of blow when you have your anorexic mindset bloating like so bad i know that all i did when i was going through this with the horrendous blow you blow everywhere on your body i just wore oversized outfits i just literally lived in joggers hoodies really stretchy leggings big coats big oversized tops i know i know it's not the most stylish you're not going to feel the most confident in it at the same time i definitely felt way more comfortable in my oversized clothes than a crop top and jeans or like a skirt and a dress you know what i mean it's not going to last forever that you're going to have to wear that but while you're going through the beginning stages of your recovery where you're feeling your least confident you're eating more than normal you're having all of your like symptoms of recovery don't make you feel good it's going to be the hardest part of the start of recovery because you have like all your symptoms of like recovery and it's difficult to push through but once you push through that you don't want to go back like it's it's weird it's difficult for a period of time you get this like sense of like achievement and like you see that it's working if you know what I mean you see your mentality is changing and feel happier and that it's gonna be okay almost just in that hard period oversized clothes comfy clothes keep yourself happy you don't want to be having to think about the extra like oh what do I look like in this as much as I don't want you guys to cover yourself up covering myself up for that short period of time definitely did help me I know when you're in your recovered body you'll be absolutely killing it wearing any outfit you want and loving life and looking beautiful yeah did I have any food rituals how to break them rituals and oh my god did I have food rituals this was the oh my god absolute killer of 
month's anorexia for me. Genuinely, the planning of food, when to eat it, how to eat it, what I should eat, why I should eat it. It was an absolute nightmare. Like, it was diagnosed OCD to me. Like, it was just horrible. Breaking this was the main thing that sort of broke down into recovery, like, helped my recovery amazingly. Like, once I got rid of these rituals and got through it all, recovery became so much smoother for me. What I would say, and the only way I'd say it, when I was with Cam's, they wanted me to do the set thing that they do with everyone, which is, here's a meal plan of this many calories, this is what you need to do to gain weight. And with me, it was more than just the weight, it was my mentality. I was like, I'm not doing it. I, I'm not eating that much food. I'm not eating what you're telling me to eat. How can I do that? Like, I couldn't comprehend that if I'm going to be eating more, I should be eating what my body has been craving for how long I've been restricting it, right? So with me, all in was the best thing to break my rituals. It would stress me out if on my meal plan it said toast in the morning and I fancied cornflakes. Do you know what I mean? Like, that would stress me out because then it would feel wrong to eat the cornflakes even though it would be, like, completely okay to eat the cornflakes. So for me, going to all in genuinely was the best thing ever. If you don't know what all in is, it literally is when you respond to your extreme hunger, your mental hunger and your physical hunger, which is extreme hunger. So when you are starving yourself, you sort of lose your hunger cues and you start to get mental hunger and the amount of cravings you get is literally so draining and so exhausting and all you want to do is just eat and eat and eat and eat and eat and even when you pass your physical hunger so even when you're literally stuffed to the rim where you feel like you could just not move for about five hours your brain is still telling you you need more food and it's because of the amount of time you've been restricting for it's trying to make up for it all in this period where it's like oh my god i can eat like give me food and you need to listen to that don't think okay so tomorrow i'm going to eat this at this time and then i'm going to do this at this time and then i'm going to do this and then i don't have to eat this do not do that just think tomorrow i'm going to wake up and eat whatever i want if you can't drive ask your mom really nicely ask your dad anyone that can drive ask a friend if they'll be really kind to you <laughs> let them take you to go get food whenever you need it and not have an issue with it before you start if you fancy that mcdonald's if you fancy that domino's if you fancy a starbucks whatever it is you can just be like oh i really want this now let's go and not think about it you just go and get it and it will all start to become so much more natural and normal for you if you just be going to tesco i want this specific chocolate although that is feeding into your obsessive mindset with food because it's like i have to eat this or i'm not eating it's a start do you know what i mean and then once you've done that for a while you'll start to realize that you don't have to eat them things you can eat things that are already in the house it's the process and this is how it worked for me so yeah all in is the way to break food rituals i would say to talk about coping with extreme hunger which is really similar to sort of the answer i've just said it really is the even if you are so so full if you still have something on your mind it is good and it is the correct thing to eat it that is just all you need to remember you will thank yourself in the future i promise you i can literally if i can tell you anything i promise you that will be the case someone's asked me to talk about how to know when you're sick enough for recovery i hate this i hate that's even a thing i hate that people think they are not sick enough that everyone goes through it it's when you're in this mindset you just want to keep getting smaller and smaller and get more symptoms to show you're anorexic not to everyone else but just for yourself self-achievement which is completely wrong you are literally killing yourself as soon as you realize you are getting obsessed with food just unhealthy it's not right you know that it's not right you just have this feeling you're like you're planning your day around food you're feeling guilty if you do this blah 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 that's only gonna get worse if you get to that point you need help then you're sick enough then you're sick enough as soon as you even contemplate it as soon as you consider it you are sick enough please don't think oh well she's she's lost period and she's losing her hair and she's not got any help so that means i'm not sick enough no way she's been sick enough way longer than you have you are still sick enough that's not a level of sick enough you are sick enough you just need to get the help before it gets worse and worse and worse and worse because at what point then are you going to say you're sick enough are you going to get to the very very last second and then have to go through a really 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 hard time to get back to your healthy self or are you gonna accept that you need to get better earlier rather than later that's the right thing to do you need to save the save everything and just do everything early please please don't let yourself get bad you can do it and it'll be so worth it no promise
just want to ask like how has social media affected my recovery i'd say there's so many pros and cons to social media really really does depend doesn't it like when you go through social media and see all these uh, beautiful girls that have these amazing like hourglass figures probably getting hyped up just for being slim you know sometimes that can be you know, obviously unintentional like, that can be triggering and that shouldn't be triggering but you know sometimes it can be but then i think keep reminding yourself why you're doing it they're not you they haven't been through what you've been through they have a different life they're doing their own thing you don't know what they're going through you don't know what they're doing to look like that you don't know if they're depressed and sad to look like that you don't know maybe they have a really fast metabolism and that's completely okay you don't need to look the way society is hyping up like you can look exactly how your body wants to look like the amount it wants to eat what it wants to eat let your body be and be happy with how it is because nobody's body's gonna look the same your body is like your own beautiful exterior like you're beautiful exactly the way you are and i truly truly mean that from what my heart and then i see other girls on social media that are like curvy and like absolutely stunning they're getting hyped up and when you see someone that's like similar to your body type and they're getting like hyped up it's like yeah like you love that so it really does depend and then you see all like the body positivity videos which i absolutely love which is like what i'm trying to sort of do with like my tiktok and stuff because whenever i see videos like that on my feed page and stuff it's just like i don't know it's like a rare sunshine like i just love it so i want to be that place that people can like come to my account and just like feel safe and happy and not feel like they're going to get triggered or i don't know they just feel like better about themselves because i love accounts where i literally follow so many accounts that i can just go on and just feel happy i think as long as you're not following people that you know is going to make you feel shit about yourself and going to make you like relapse be strong enough to say i don't need to follow this person i am good enough the way i am do you know what i mean like i am worthy like i don't need to follow this person follow people that make you happy i was asked am i like a new brook and i think i mentioned this slightly earlier 100 percent. i'm completely different i was always this person at the core but when i was going through my peak of my my ed and my recovery and stuff it was so difficult and it was so worth it 100 percent worth it but it was so difficult and the way your body makes you react and be is just not nice it's really not nice and you, like no one deserves to go through that when you come out the other side you get a new improved boss bitch woman or man but i'm a woman did you experience binging in recovery and i absolutely hated this comment i was like no <laughs> please don't say this like please do not think that if you are answering your body and eating what your body wants it is not binging binging is a completely different thing binging is a different disorder it not binging you're making up for however long you have been restricting for i used to eat in all in at 10 to 15 thousand calories a day for about i don't know how many months probably like half a year or longer probably longer and i was not binging loads of food and that's not a normal amount of like intake for someone but it was not binging i was eating what my body needed and what it wanted because that's what it needed then and now i eat nowhere near that on a daily basis but that's not because i'm choosing to restrict i am just still eating what my body needs and wants but it doesn't need 10 to 15 000 calories anymore it needs what it asks me for which is what i give it do you know what i mean like it changes every day please never think you're binging when you're just eating like it doesn't matter how much you're eating you're not binging if you're in recovery someone said about deciding when and what to eat which again i'm sort of just going to link that to the question i answered about the food rituals thing it's literally just go all in like that answer about going all in is for this like it just takes away pressure of when to eat you just eat when your body you do instead of planning it and stuff like don't think about when you're eating if you're thinking about food eat if you're thinking about it eat i remember i used to sit there and i would have just eaten like 5,000 calories in one sitting and i'd be like absolutely stuffed i'd be like so physically full but my brain would just be thinking of food still and I wouldn't know what I'd fancy I'd just go and get something and then it came to a point where I would sit there and I would actually feel satisfied like 7,000 calories later I'd, and I wouldn't think of food and that was the best feeling in the world because I'd only ever known like thinking of food it gets to a point where you just don't think of food yeah i hope this helped you guys i really really do this is really important to me like i just love you guys so much and i want you to be happy and healthy and if you guys ever need any help send me a dm on instagram i love you so much oh you guys are amazing and don't forget to end my giveaway on instagram i love you so so much from the bottom of my heart i hope you have an amazing day follow me on all socials and i'll see you in my next video bye guys